Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? My name is Ray Nell Roy. Welcome back to my channel, Fish and Trips. And we back for another vlog, y'all. All right, check it out, man. Where you at right now? I'm at the Surfside Jetty. I'm at the Surfside Jetty to witness something that you don't really see often. Green, clear water. I know people from Florida like, what's the big deal with green, clear water? It's a big deal down here, okay? If you're from Galveston or Freeport, we don't see green water. We see brown, chocolate brown, dark brown, um, dark red, because, you know, some dead bodies, crack pipes, whatever. You know what I mean. So check it out, man. So my goal today is try to catch to keep a trout, Keeper sheephead, keeper flounder, anything with the word keeper. Anything that starts with the letter K, I want to catch. I want to catch so I can take it back to the house, cook, and try to clean something. Man, it's been a while since I completed my catch, clean, and cook. So that's the goal today. Personally, you know what? I think I can do it. I think we on, y'all. Oh, fish on, y'all. Fish on. Enjoy the vlog. Let go. Got our windows down, driving down the 405, sing along to the radio. We're gonna make it someday. Nothing's gonna get in our way. We will be the biggest band in town. Round and round the world we'll go, putting on the greatest show. Trip, right? Yeah, nice to meet you. What's your name? Nice to meet you. Oscar. Oscar, nice to meet you, man. Yeah. Just coming out? I just get over here, man. Oh, for real? Any luck? Just getting started. No, I said it was nice. You are, are you fishing chips? <sighs> Alright, so I'm using my jetty rig setup. I'm going to stitch about five feet deep to start. Readjust my bobber. Got a 20 pound mono. Number two size hook with a lot of shrimp. Here we go. What is this? What is this? This is a mango snapper. I know because people debate about this all the time. All right, people always debate about what this is. Some people think it's a piggy perch. Some people debate it's a mango snapper. But people don't know. I don't think people really know. So y'all tell me in the comments, piggy perch or mango snapper? Piggy perch or mangrove snapper. All right, let's put it back in. Oh, there we go, there we go. There we go, there we go, there we go. Fish on, fish on. Got it. I'm like 10 feet deep. Okay. What the hell is that? Check this out, y'all. This. I don't know if it's a, I think it's a huge sand trout. <laughs> a 14 inch sand trout, no speckles on it. So we're gonna get it back. I think we on y'all. Oh, fish on y'all. Fish on. Oh, we got a sheeper. We got a sheeper. Okay, we got a nice sheep. Hold on, I'm gonna try to flip it on the boat. Flip it on, get on, get on, get on, get on. Get on the boat, baby. Nice sheeper, baby. All right, y'all. So we got us a nice little keeper sheeper. Nice little keeper sheeper. 16 inches is the keeper. Let's go. It's about my third cast. Got closer to the rocks. Bit it on the circle hook. So into the cooler she goes. Let's see if we can get his big brother. One is big brother. Looks healthy. No spores. So hopefully no worms. But we got us a keeper, baby. Definitely got us a keeper. There we go. Oh, 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 jump rock. <gasps> popping no. A popping no, my God. It's a popping no. It's a popping no. Oh, my God. I need this. I need this. It's a popping no. Let's go. Let's go. Poppin' O. Yes. Y'all, I'm about to have a heat stroke. But it was worth it. It was absolutely worth it. 
I got my first popping though. This fish is on my bucket list, man. These are primarily in Florida. I started watching Bama Beast Bun and got addicted to these fish. And ever since then, for like the last two months, I wanted to catch my first popping though. And we did it. Can't believe it, man. I'm really excited to see what this fish tastes like. I gotta get back to my truck because I'm about to die. It was worth it, popping out. Absolute beast. Absolute beast, baby. Cannot wait to try it and see what it tastes like. We did it, baby. Bucket list. The only other fish I have on my bucket list is a jack and a rainbow trout. But today we got it done. Let's go. All right, y'all, so I'm back at home, back in Houston. I hope you enjoyed the catch segment of the vlog. Man, it was a grind. I really wish I could have stayed out there longer, but y'all, I was about to die, man. I'll tell that story at the clean section of the, the vlog, okay? Now check it out. So um, what do I have in store for my first Papa No? I mean, I don't know, man. I think I'm just gonna fry it up because you know, the first time you ever taste a fish, you gotta fry it, okay? I think I'm gonna do one filet fried, the other filet on my cast iron skillet so I can kind of taste the flavor of the pop. You know what I'm saying? The pop. The poppin' was one on my bucket list because I have three fish that was on my bucket list, okay? Number one was a Jack, Jack Cavell, so I haven't caught one. Number two is the most racist fish in existence, AKA Rainbow Trout. If you don't know why it's racist, I'll explain later in another vlog. My subscribers, they'll tell you. We'll get to that later. Number three was a poppin' man. So I caught my first poppin' on my bucket list. So I'm excited, man. So yeah, I guess go ahead and try to clean it. Now, anytime you, you know, catch a fish for the first time, you don't know how to clean it, you go to YouTube and figure out how to clean it. So I watched a couple of videos, so now I'm an expert on cleaning the poppin' Let's see how that goes. Come on, let's go. All right, y'all, let's get this party started. All right, so let's talk about the star of the show, which is the poppin' poppin' Now these are a really popular down in Florida. I think the poppin' is like the equivalent of flounder for Texans, you know what I'm saying? So the poppin' is a really, popular fish down in Florida. You really don't see them often here in Texas. So I'm excited to catch one, man. I got obsessed with these fish when um, I subscribed to a YouTuber called Bama Beast Bum, and he's always talking about catching pumps, catching pumps, catching pumps. So I got obsessed with trying to catch my first pump. It was on my bucket list, so we got it taken care of. Now something else I wanna show y'all is this. I came across this recently, man. Now I have a nine inch not, Bubba Blade. Yeah, nine inch Bubba Blade. And you know, it was like $55. So I was at, you know, Academy, and I was gonna get a seven inch Bubba Blade for $55. But then I came across this Ugly Stick right here. And you know, I like the brand Ugly Stick because this is what my surf rods are, Ugly Sticks. And the thing that caught my attention was $19.99. That's right, $19.99, what? So I'm like, you know what, I'm going ahead and try it out. You know, the grip itself, Feels really good, man. So we're gonna try out this 1999 filet knife, ugly stick, and give it a go. And I'm gonna do an honest review to let you know whether or not it's trash. Because if this filet knife is good, okay, it comes with a little sheath, then I'm really questioning why Bubba knives are so dang expensive. So we'll test it out. This is the unboxing. We got a catch, clean, and cook in an unboxing. Boy, we killing it, man. We are definitely killing it. This video is not sponsored by Ugly Stick, but highlights a boy, unless I talk trash about the blade, okay? All right, so first observation is hella sharp, hella sharp. Why, when people test out the sharpness of a knife, the first thing we wanna do is put our flesh to it and see how much it feels like it can cut us open? I don't know. Um, the grip feels really good, as you can see. It's like a hard, plastic you know it has a tapered end like that right there seven inches a little line cutter here but it feels good man why is this $19.99 maybe it's not sharp we'll see all right so let's put this to the side all right so when it comes to filleting a papano apparently you want to work your way towards his head right because they got some good head meat, apparently. And you gotta just feel like right here to that. So we're gonna collar the head along the top. So we'll see. So we're gonna just kind of feel, whoa, whoa, whoa. Y'all, this knife is sharp as heck. All right, so we're gonna just work our way 
to the head meat. Hold on, alarm going off. All right, I'm back. So first observation of this knife is super sharp. So we're gonna work our way to the head meat as so. Super sharp, gonna come around the collar, the fin, and work our way back around. All right, I'm not gonna say nothing just yet. I'm not gonna say nothing just yet, but the first cuts. This seems a lot sharper than Bubba Knives. 19.99, let me keep going, let me keep going. All right, so once we work our way to the head meat, so we're gonna turn and work our way up the spine. Just like the top, right? Just like any other fish, allegedly. Bro, <laughs> this knife is so sharp. Oh my God, it's like butter. Hold on, y'all. Let's go work our way. See what this pump meat look like. Super white, first observation. Super white, first observation. Okay. And we're just working our way down the spine, just like any other fish. Okay. Hold on. As you can see, I just kind of cut on the top of the head meat and work my way around. Now I'm just working my way along the top of the spine, right above the rib cage. Now, something they say about Papano is that they're really hard to skin. <laughs> so we'll see. Gotta watch them fingers right now. Y'all, this knife is amazing. I cannot believe it's only $19.99. Here we go. Super. The meat is really white. There we go. Just like that, just like that. Solid fish. The meat feels really firm. I can't compare it to something, but it's not mussy, it's really firm. Now, another trick is, I heard people have issues with flaying the other side of the fish, just like myself. So I was reading a comment on somebody else's video as far as how to flay a papano, and the dude was like, I'm having trouble flaying the other side of the fish. So some person was like, hey, keep the other side still attached, put it back. Put it back. There you go, baby. It's okay. It's okay. You still good. You still good. Then fillet the other side of the fish, and apparently it's a lot easier to do. All right, here we go. Make sure we're on focus. So we're gonna do the same thing around. Let's work our way along that soft part of the head. They got a big head. So we're gonna get that head meat. Just come around the collar. I know one thing, man, these jokers are mean. <laughs> when I caught him, he was not having it. He was not having it. Initially, they had like a lot of slime on it, but we got it done. All right, so let's see if it's easier to flay with the other side intact. I don't know if I like the feel of this. So we're gonna go along the top of the rib cage top of the bone, as so. Now, a lot of people ask like, what did I catch it on? I was working my bobber and I caught it on a lot of shrimp and it was closer to the rocks, um, maybe like 10 feet off the shore. Mm. And I think I noticed is that I had to adjust my bobber really deep. You know what I'm saying? At first I was kind of going about five feet deep then I just been like the heck with it. I adjust my bobber to like a depth of 10 feet and my bobber just kind of slowly went down. And when I set the hook, you know, initially, you know, the fish wasn't really fighting that hard until it realized it was hooked. Once it realized it was hooked, it was on like Donkey Kong. These little jokers got some fight to it, man. All right, so there we go. So I don't know whether or not that was easier. 
I guess so, because I, I got it. Now, here's the hard part, allegedly. is trying to skin your filet. I think because their skin is really maybe soft or hard. I don't know, but they say it's really hard to fillet a papano. But let me let y'all take a look at the fillets. The meat, super white, super white. It's firm. That's amazing. I don't know, man. I think I did a good job for my first time filleting a papano. Let's see what we got. Look at that, baby. Look at that, baby. Not that much meat. Not that much meat. It's transparent. Can you see my hand? Yeah, you can see my hand. All right, so that's the first popping up. Let me just get this. Hold on, y'all. So what y'all think, man? I need y'all to comment below. Wait, don't comment below yet. I wish I thought my first fillet skills with my first popping up is. Because here's the hard part. Now, I heard they have rib cages. Oh, yeah, I feel it. Right there in the center. But what I'm going to try to do is skin it. Now, so far, this fillet knife, 19.99 Ugly Stick for Nay Life, is amazing. All right, here we go. So let's try to skin it. Okay. So I think I gotta kind of stay above the skin in the slight upward angle, probably. There we go. Now somebody suggested to bake it and just score it. Oh man, gotta come up a little bit higher. And scale it. I didn't realize it even had scales because it's like a really smooth fish. All right, first observation, look at that. So we got some skin right here. I didn't bleed the fish. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna come back around and see if we can just get the skin off. So when you fillet or skin a papano, you definitely have to keep it at an upper angle to get that skin. But it wasn't that bad, to be honest with you. There we go, y'all. So that is my filleted pop. See, we have a bloodline here. We're gonna cut that out. And we got some rib cage, rib bones, pin fish, whatever you wanna call it. So we're gonna come right along here. Y'all, this knife, I'm telling you right now, and I say this with complete honesty, this is my official fillet knife. You know what I'm saying? Because the fact that this knife is only $19.99, it's amazing, man. You can, you can buy three of these for the equivalent of one Bubba Blade. Now, if you think I'm lying, please go buy this knife at Academy if you can find it. And you better try to find it quick. Because if this video gets some views, I'm pretty sure people are gonna go look for it. All right, so we got that. All right, so here is my semi-cut <laughs> poppin' though. So let's see if I can get a better, let me see if I can skin it the second time around better, okay? So now that I know I need to keep it at an upper angle to see if I can get it better done. Hold on, let me see. There we go. All right, so we're gonna come upwards. All right, slowly work our way. And a sharp blade is definitely gonna help your situation trying to skin this pompano. Slowly work our way up. Losing some meat, come trying to stay above the skin, which is hard to do. The meat feels like a steak. And I'm definitely, all right, Progress. Okay. Come across here. We come across this top head section here. All right. Attempt number two. We still got some skin. <laughs> A little bit better than the first time. But it can be fixed. It can definitely be fixed. So we're gonna come across here. 
So yeah, man, once the fish realized it was hooked, man, it was on and popping, y'all. These little jokers got some strength to them for sure, for sure. All right, so we got that little top part of the head meat. Let's kind of, let's just trim that off there. All right, we're gonna get the rib cage, the pin bones right here in the center. and just kind of fill them out. Meat super fresh, no worms, no parasites. There we go. Flip it around. Okay, got a slight bloodline. We'll cut that out. There we go. All right, y'all, so wasn't that bad? Wasn't that bad at all? Everybody tells me like how good this fish is to eat. So I got high expectations and we'll see. All right, y'all, so next up is my favorite combination of how I like to batter my fish. Simple process, simple process indeed, okay? Panko. Fish fry, Zatteray. Zatteray, panko, fish fry. Simple process, man. This is my favorite things to use to batter my fish. Simple, man. So what we're gonna do is double batter, okay? So what I, if I'm a double batter, you got a couple of beaten eggs, my fish fry flour, my panko bread crumbs. Simple as that. All right. So we're just gonna put them down there, get them nice and soaked. This meat is so firm, y'all. Like that. There we go. All right, perfect. Just gonna let that soak for a second, be right back. All right, so what we're gonna do is double batter. So we'll put it in our flour, like that. We'll put back in our egg batter, like that. Back in our flour, fish fry batter, like that. Then back <laughs> in the egg batter. We're double battering this, man. I want some crispy fish. Then from here, put it in our pan coat. See that? And just flip it around. Make sure we get that nice breadcrumb. Now my deep fryer, it only takes two minutes to cook the fish. Gotta wash it. And that's it, y'all. So can y'all see that? Can y'all see that breadness? That is gonna be so good. Pop, baby, pop. All right, y'all, so I got my cast iron skillet. Some very hot butter. We're just gonna a little asparagus, a little asparagus. There we go. Nothing too fancy. Use a little pink salt, ground it, of course. There we go. There we go. All right. So as I'm getting this, just want us to saute that. You're gonna cook your asparagus until so it not gets really soft, you want to have a crisp to it, but it's going to have a light sear. All right? And make sure you get your butter mixed in great with your asparagus. Add some. Simple. Simple, y'all. It's that buttery. No asparagus goes unbasted, okay? No asparagus, those unbasted. You gotta baste it like some ribs, okay? Baste it like it's some ribs. Y'all from Texas, y'all know how to do that, right? All right, y'all, so this is my chef style deep fryer. I got an HEB, I get everything at HEB. Um, people say that it's hard to find because probably I promoted it and now they sold out. So we just wanna get our pump. The meat is so firm, I'm looking forward to this. Put it in our deep fryer, like that. 
I got my temperature set to about 375. We're gonna do, set our timer to two minutes because with your deep fryer, man, this fish cooks quick. I'm just gonna drop it slowly. And that's it, man. We'll put our top on it. Got my timer set for two minutes. We'll check back on the Papano and yeah, get it popping. So be right back. Let's check on our asparagus. It looks to be ready. And um, yeah, let's get a good close up on our asparagus real quick. All right, so let's take a look at our fish. It should be done pretty soon, about a minute here. All right, y'all, so that's it. We got our asparagus ready, our pompano's ready. Let's go ahead and make our plate, get the money shot, head to the table. There you go. So that looks delicious, doesn't it? All right, y'all, so let's try my first piece of Papano. Let's see where we go. Here we go, here we go. Hold on. All right, first impression. Hold on, before I say this, let me take another bite. Before I say this, let me take another bite. All right, <clears throat> check this out, y'all. I need a moment. Now, on a scale of like, you know, one being gap top, 10 being in flounder, this is the 10th. In 40 years of life, flounder has been my favorite fish on the planet until today. Y'all, Papano is my new favorite fish. I'm upset at the fact that I'm probably never gonna catch another one again in my life unless I go to Florida. But if y'all never had Papano, this is better than flounder. Do y'all realize how big of a statement that is? This is better than flounder. People said it was good, and I thought that was capping, like kind of over exaggerating. The meat is firm, juicy. And this is the best fish I've ever ate. So now I gotta think, what do I need to do to catch more of these Papano. I have a Papano rig. I bought a Papano rig, I haven't used it yet. And that's how obsessed I was with these fish. But we're gonna have to try to utilize it. I gotta figure out how I can target these fish here in Texas. This is better than flounder. This is the best fish I've ever tasted. No fishy taste, the meat is firm, it's fresh. That's amazing. Look, man, if you never ate Papano, I would advise you if you ever catch one, take it home, fry it up, and 1000%, this is gonna be the best fish you've ever tasted. Saltwater fish, period, period. So, um, yeah. Damn, I can't believe how good that is. All right, y'all, so check this out. Let me focus. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. If you did, make sure you smash the thumbs up. I need 200 likes. I need 200 likes to make me feel like I did something important today, okay? 200 likes, smash the thumbs up, okay? Make sure you subscribe, okay? If you made it down to the end of this video, obviously like me, so go ahead and subscribe. But if you're not ready, it's all good. I'll get you on the next one. It's been real, y'all. I'm out the grub. Peace.